I grew up with the idea that life consisted of living the American dream. Get all you can, can all you can get, and that's what I tried to do with my life. Terry Hawkins. By the age of 20, I owned three houses in southern Florida, was on my way to being an independently wealthy man, and I got it all illegal. I obtained all that through selling drugs up and down the east coast of Florida, made a point of delivering all the drugs, picking up the money myself. Then one day, one of the greatest things in my life happened to me. I got busted. I had to go before a judge that didn't have much feeling for drug pushers and drug dealers. He sentenced me to just about the rest of my life to be spent in a federal penitentiary in Florida. On the way to the, to the federal penitentiary, my fellow prisoners and I were taken to a stockade in, Florida, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where we worked on a chain gang. My first week in prison, they, they were gonna have a fellowship meeting and I signed up to, to go to the fellowship meeting. When I got there, there was a Gideon there, and he offered me a little testament, and I took it. Thank you. And I knew when I took that little testament, I was taking it for the wrong reasons. You see, on that chain gang, we had some. We were peri periwinkle flowers out there, and we'd pick them and dry them and roll them in cigarette papers and smoke them, and get high. And I was about out of papers, and I thought, well, you know, those little old pages in that Bible will work pretty good for that. And so I'd, I'd smoke a little bit, read a little bit, smoke a little bit. I got to John 3.16 where it said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You know, I knew that meant me, but I just couldn't understand how God could send his only begotten son to die for a drug pusher. That following Saturday, the Gideon came back for another Bible study. I asked him to explain to me about John 3.16, and he did. A couple of days later, I fell on my knees, and I invited Jesus to come into my life. I'd never before read the Bible. It took me about five weeks to get through that New Testament, but I finished it in five weeks. And God did a miracle in my life, and it was evident to everybody around. I only knew one song, Victory in Jesus. And when I was out on that chain gang, I'd sing that song and talk to them about Jesus. And the guards would tell me, man, you can't sing out here. You got to work. Quit all that singing. I'd tell them, Jesus got a hold on me. I got to sing. They'd throw me in the box. When they put you in the box, you couldn't stand up, you couldn't squat down, and they'd throw me in the box, and I'd come out, and they'd throw me back in the box. Roaches crawling all over you, all over me. And the guard who kept throwing me in the box would tell his Sunday school class, he said, you know, we got a real fanatic in the prison out there. All he wants to do is talk about Jesus. We throw him in the box, he comes out, he's still talking about Jesus, we throw him back in the box. But remember, God was doing a work in my life. The mayor was a member of that Sunday school class, and the mayor was a Gideon. And that Gideon started really getting excited about old Terry Hawkins in that prison. And he worked out a deal with the judge and told him, I'd like this guy to come to work for me. God had already set me free on the inside, and he was fixing to set me free on the outside. He began to do a marvelous work in me. I wasn't there. I, I wasn't, it wasn't long before that Gideon took me under his wing and began discipling me in my newfound faith. It was the same Gideon who had given me that New Testament in prison, and now he was teaching me how to be a man of God. I'm a pastor now. I look for Gideons in a church because they'll work with me. Gideons, distributing the word of God 
really works. God bless you. I want to thank you, Pastor Randy and the members of this congregation for your support and the privilege to share with y'all this morning. I'm going to start off doing a little bit of bragging. You know, last year, this ministry handed out its two billionth copy of God's holy word into the waiting hands of a person that needed the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It took us 93 years to hand out that first billion Bibles, 14 for the second billion, and I want y'all to help us tighten up and get to work on that third billion Bibles. You know, it's kind of hard to imagine that every five days this ministry hands out over a million more Bibles. And this is possible because y'all have got a quarter of a million missionaries, the Gideons, ready to place the Word of God for you in 200 different countries, printed in 101 different languages. And I heard another figure this a couple of weeks ago. I told you we've, di we've distributed two billion copies of God's Holy Word. Since the printing presses have started printing, there have been five billion copies of God's Holy Word printed, and the, and the Gideons have distributed two of those five. Forty percent of all the Bibles that have ever been printed, the Gideons distributed. Thank you. This is your ministry. Who are the Gideons? Gideons International is a Christian business and professional men's organization made up of members in good standing of local evangelical churches just like this one. Gideons are continually active in their churches bringing God's witness to the world. Acts 1.8 says in part, And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and into Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It's a challenge to each of us to witness to those around the world and those right here with us. The Gideons are just an extension arm of this church. We're the men of the church going where the church can't go. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! That's what the man was thinking as he traveled down the road in that old truck. He couldn't sleep all he could think about. He just had an obsession to kill this guy's worst enemy. And that night, he found an unfamiliar book in his hotel room, spent most of the night reading in that book. The next morning, after he packed up, left the motel room, the cleaning lady found a pistol, a Gideon Bible, opened up to Romans with some verses underlined, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay Sitting beside that book, there was a note. He said, you know, this book saved two lives, mine and my worst enemy. As Gideons, we distribute testaments to middle school, junior high, and high school students around the world and right here locally. The children overseas have such respect for God's holy word, and it'll oftentimes be the only book that they ever own. I got a buddy that went out in South America a while back, and he said, Harry, you just can't believe how hungry for the Word of God people are down here. He said, just anywhere that he would go, and they would witness to people through his interpreter, and, and, and they, they just, almost everyone accepted the Lord. They took a copy of God's Holy Word. Said he went into a school, said everybody in one of the classes all of them accepted Jesus. The teacher accepted Jesus. The teacher said, you know, we've got books, but we've never had enough books where every child had one that was all the same. And said, with these new books that you've given us, the Bible, he, she said, I'll teach reading and writing out of this book. I just can't imagine what the Holy Spirit can get done in a situation like that. You know, Mark 10, 14, Jesus says, Suffer the little children under me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Jesus always put the ministry to the young. He always gave that a high priority, and so do we in the Gideons. 
We also place complete Bibles in hotels and moped, motels, New Testaments, and doctor's offices, hospitals, colleges, jails, and we try to intercept men, women, boys, and girls with a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. One of our favorite ways of, of donating funds to buy Bibles is to use the Gideon Card Program. It's available all year, not just when the Gideons come to your church to speak. Jeannie and I use the cards for, for special occasions. We, we've got a, the praying for you card. Boy, people love to know that you've been thinking of them and praying for them. But mostly, I guess, we use an in-memory card in, conjun <clears throat> in conjunction with the death of a loved one or friend. They also always give such hope to the family. Herbert Ovalchek grew up in an Orthodox Jewish home. By the age of 70, by the age of seven, he had most of the Hebrew scriptures memorized. By the age of nine, he could speak fluent Galilean Arama Aramaic, the language of Christ. By the age of 13, he had already been studying the Greek Age of 17, he was ordained as an Orthodox Jewish rabbi. By the age of 19, he was the dean of the largest rabbinical school in Brooklyn, New York. And in his career, he ordained some 327 other rabbis. He taught at the University of Pennsylvania, at Harvard Divinity School, he did his doctorate, listen to this, he did his doctorate in New Testament studies because he wanted to know his enemy and he was a thoroughly happy Orthodox rabbi until one night. He was in Boston on business for a graduate school where he presided as dean and Delta Airlines did him the best favor anybody could have ever done for him. They lost his luggage. All he had that night when he got to the hotel was a small packet of, of Jewish verses. And for some reason, that just didn't interest him that night. He turned on the TV, rolled the channels, and he couldn't find anything he was interested in there either. Couldn't find anything. He started just going through the drawers there in his hotel room, and he found a, a red Gideon Bible in the drawer there in the room. Now let me remind you, he had a doctorate in Jewish background on the New Testament. He'd read most of the scriptures in the original Greek and had read the first, all the first century commentaries on it. So he was sure he had all the answers, forward and backward. But he didn't believe a word of that New Testament until that night when he said it, it all seemed to open itself up to the book of John, and he began to really read it through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. By the time he got to Nicodemus and Jesus' teachings on being born again, he said his eyes were starting to tear up, his body was trembling, and he didn't know what to do. He thanked the Lord that the Holy Spirit had entered him that night entered his heart for the first time in his life. He spent the rest of that night going through that Gideon New Testament, seeing how it fulfilled all those Old Testament prophecies he had learned from childhood. He'd never trembled so before or been so scared in his life. But he knew that without that red Gideon Place Bible in that hotel room, he'd be lost for eternity. God is good. Jesus is Lord and Savior. And although he'd been an academician all his life, God had him out doing rescue mission work for the next 10 years. He'd been toiling in the fields, bringing others to the Lord, not because of anything that he had done, but because of that red Bible in that hotel room. He came to the Gideons. He sent us his testimony. He thanked us. He said, you know, without the Gideons, Hundreds of lives would have not been touched 
Now this man, now Herbert is on the board of the first rescue, mil, rescue mission in Tel Aviv, Israel. And we're taking God's word there and we're going to populate the land of Israel with rescue missions, bringing to his own people the true and living word of God. He thanked us for all that we were doing. I want to tell you, if it wasn't for this church, there wouldn't be any Gideons. He was thanking the wrong people. He needed to thank the church. You know, backing up a little bit to the Gideon card program, I talked to several people this morning about the Gideon card program. You know that praying for you card, it's just kind of a catch-all card. And like I say, people just love to hear from you in that order. If you got a grandson living down the street, send him a Gideon card. You've been praying for him. You know, let him know that you think he's so special that some child, maybe on the other side of the world, will get a Bible just because of how much you love your grandson. It'll have a, a little short testimony in the card. The cards, if, if you compare them to a card at a store, they just, you know, they're a $5 card to start with. So, and the, and the cards are free. And you can buy, buy a $5 Bible or a, a hundred of them or do whatever you want to. And, and it lets, lets them know you just think they're special and, and gets you to talking to your grandchildren about the Lord or whoever you send it to. Most of us have people in our lives that we'd like to talk to about Jesus. And it's easier to go out here on the street corner and talk to somebody about the Lord than it is somebody you truly love and are concerned about, just a, a close friend. You send them a card that you're praying for them. Next time y'all run into each other, they're going to thank you for that card. You know what y'all going to be doing? You're going to be talking about Jesus. It's your chance to be able to witness to those that you have not been able to witness to. All the Gideon donations are, are certainly tax deductible, but a lot bigger deal than that is 100% of what y'all give to the card program, your contribution this morning, it all goes to buy God's holy word. You know, I said something to you about my buddy going to South America. He pays for his airline ticket. He pays for his hotel room. He buys his meals. Your money buys those Bibles that he distributes while he's down there. And what a privilege it is to be able to distribute God's holy word. Your investment in the card program will change lives for many years to come. Ten Bibles placed in hotels and motels have the potential to reach 26,000 people in their average six-year life. One of my favorite verses, God's holy word, is Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. If we buy those Bibles and get them out there, his word will not return void. You know, there's three, three ways that you can really support the Gideons. And first of all is your prayers. We need your prayers. We need you to pray for his will. We need you to pray that the politically correct situations that we keep finding ourselves in, people just trying to box the Christian religion and, and certainly the Bibles out, out of bow. You know, I had somebody ask me about the local schools this morning. There's one of the, some of the schools let us in, some won't. And, I, and when I was talking to the man that wouldn't let us in, he said, well, you know, I go along with what y'all are trying to do, but these kids need to get their Bibles from home. Well, he's right. They do need to, but it doesn't happen, you know. Pray that we'll be able to get into the schools and the, 
in all the different places to deliver these Bibles and that people will pick them up and the Holy Spirit will grab hold of them. Secondly, we need members. We're like any organization. We're always looking for new members. And I always tell people you don't have to get up here in this pulpit to be a Gideon. I was a Gideon for one or two years and and I wanted to speak. It just y'all don't can't imagine what an intimidating bunch y'all are. I'm telling you, it might it might. I still get nervous up here, and I'd about pretty much made up my mind that I would not be a speaker. I'd, I'd been a kid in for a couple of years, and I sat down beside John Killian. He was speaking to somebody else. He wasn't talking to me. I was just eavesdropping, and he was telling them how. I'd, makes John nervous to get up here in front of y'all. But he said, you know, with what Jesus Christ has done for me, this is the least that I can do for him. Well, this big old boy made up his mind that evening, I'm going to speak in churches. They're they going to hear this big old loud mouth. So here I am, but you don't have to do that. Like, like Brother Randy said, everybody ain't quite as big loud mouth as I am anyway. We, thirdly, we need your financial support through the Gideon card program and your contribution this morning. You know, a few years ago, I, I had a buddy from up in Tennessee. That first big tsunami that I ever remembered just killed hundreds of thousands of people. And this guy called me and he said, hey, he said, I guess just like me, the first thing you thought of this morning and you heard the news that I'd done all I could do for those perishing souls. Well, I was a little embarrassed because that wasn't the first thing I thought of when I saw that news. And I certainly had not done all I could do for those perishing souls. You know, today, 25,000 people have died in India that are not saved. And the Gideon ministry is absolutely pouring Bibles into India and in, in China. One of the, Gina and I listen to a lot of statistics. One of them that really touched both of us. On this big planet of ours, every hour, the length of, of, of this today's service, every hour, 4,000 people will die that don't know him. He died for them. You don't even know who he is. Jesus said in Revelation 3, 8, Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Brothers and sisters, each of us has a great opportunity this morning to share Jesus with the world. I hope you all will take this opportunity. Buy the Bibles. The fields are ripe and the harvest is plentiful. And I want to thank y'all again for allowing me to tell you what God has been doing with your gifts. Please make your checks out to Gideon's International. If you didn't come prepared to give this morning, there's an offering envelope in your, in your program. And remember, the only thing that stands between God and a perishing world is this book. Thank y'all.